hello, I'm Atlas, and I am here in uh, Valheim. Now, I know I did say Wednesday, uh, and then I said Thursday, but uh, today is Friday, and I'm re-re-recording this. Mostly just because I didn't like the takes, they were too lengthy, too long, and not enough of the content that I actually wanted to talk about. Uh, this video will be a lot less scripted than usual, but at least I'll have a uh, outline to follow and uh, talk about and discuss. Uh, this video will be a part of a series to show progression of things rather than a video much like Nine Bites into Cars. That video will come much, much later as I want to show off the best foot rather than, you know, showing off the de development basics. Anyways, we're in the meadows. Uh, this is the, I guess, final map. This is the actual map. I'm not going to talk about foliage yet. We'll get to that in a little bit. Um, I will actually hop on to King of Valiant's server to talk about that. Um, there will be a lot of cuts in this, just as a heads up. This is not normally flow as uh, well as some of my other videos do. But uh, yeah, first up we have the Meadows City, which I will show you guys now. Something that um, I think is super impactful, especially when you're playing an MMO, is city design. So something that Ninebyte touched on is basically how a city feels. This is the high point, you know, these are the low points, this is the center point. So your meadow city, when you first come in, uh, you have your boss stones here. Everybody will always come back here for the boss stones. The way shrine will actually be in here and it'll be rested on the podium here. So the way I have it laid out right now is we have two houses and then they're cloned on the other side. These will be, um, not necessarily high traffic areas, but they will be uh, places that everybody goes to at first. Just for reference, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this the profession house. So when you go to pick a profession, instead of like you would have now uh, a player guide on the start menu, you'll basically come into this house and, um, you know, talk to an NPC in here and they will have a at least dialogue telling you about the professions. This one over here will be some kind of trader with some minor quests. So basically every house in, in this city, in every city, should have uh, quest givers and various guide NPCs that talk about, you know, materials you can get, uh, armors you can have and stuff like that, even if they don't necessarily have something on display. But um, every single one of the cities will be a no build zone and uh, Everything in here will be indestructible. You know, players won't go around and accidentally right-click something like the uh, demigod powers. This will probably be a trader house. Uh, and then we have the Explorer's Guild. This originally, I was going to make an achievement hall, but given how that worked in server version 2, basically people were supposed to come in here and anything that they found was an achievement, a weapon, a uh, piece of armor, you know. They were going to hang it up on the wall. Uh, basically, people were stealing, you know, serpent trophies and stuff like that in the second version. So I didn't really see a reason to keep this. But yeah, so this angular building here, uh, pretty big, will be the Explorer's Guild. And the Explorer's Guild will play a huge, huge role in the final map. A lot of players have um, discussed and asked questions about explorers, saying that they feel like they're useless. And that's mostly just because a lot of players are not engaging with the professions the way they should. Uh, players are still playing. I'm a solo Viking. I'm playing by myself. Oh, look, there's my friend. They're a solo Viking rather than working as a group or trying to play as an MMO. This is something we'll test out on the um, final map as well. Or actually, we'll test it out on the next map. Um, let's go ahead and throw this into noon. So this is the uh, general feel that I want the meadows, you know, light, airy, open, but also old. This will be your... Um, actually, let's go talk about the player bar real quick. So the player bar will have uh, cooking stations. This will appear in every city, but this will have cooking stations relevant to materials that you should have um, but uh, basically what I wanted to do was I wanted to have identifiable buildings so you have the angular one um, pointing in north and south and then east and then west 
for the um, Explorers Guild, you have a bar looking for a uh, bar looking building for the player hub area. So you'll come in here to grab a rested buff, um, sit down, cook some food, uh, meet up with other players and stuff like that. So this will be a centralized meeting location. Um, if you're not grabbing quests or completing quests or something like that, it kind of moves players out of the way. Um, and then up here, you'll have the Adventures Guild. And this will also be your marketplace and uh, other stuff like that. Uh, you'll have different different traders and stuff like that. But um, I know that you guys have seen Nine Byte and Dakar's video. If you haven't, those will be in the description. Please go and watch those. They explain a lot. Um, explain where the builds come from. Explain the ideas behind certain towns. Um, but your auction house will be here. Uh, this will be, you know, little kill deer clone model there. You'll have your, I don't know, quest board here and something like that. You'll have, you know, I don't know, a gambler in the corner talking about how much he wins and loses and stuff like that. So, you know, and then, of course, there's rest areas. So you're not going to gain like a huge rest area like you would in the player bar. Um, but, you know, wherever you're sitting down in the city should give you a decent rested bonus. Uh, most of these towns and buildings are not furnished or refurnished with, you know, all of the new furniture and stuff like that that we're currently playing with on the uh, mod pack. But a lot of these, you know, they're uh, labeled out and they're um, I have ideas for what I want to do with them. Uh, so this is the Ekthir arena. So far, this is basically the template. These do not do damage yet. The uh, lightning that spawns you can see over there but the idea is, is that these will um damage the player they'll hurt the player i have uh, a good idea of how i can do that and so for now these are just using the obliterator they look like uh, metal trees so i changed that but here's um Ekthir's altar very green very open very wide with a lot of life growing around it so Ekthir, at least in Norse mythology, isn't necessarily evil, even though he, he is in the game, right? You're supposed to kill Ekthir. Ekthir will spawn with two mini bosses, and I think what I want to do is I want to make them bristlebacks from, uh, there's these warfare. For now, basically, I have set up basic spawners, uh, to template out the world. And then let me jump over to the server real quick. Hey everyone, welcome back, welcome back. Uh, thank you all for waiting. I have uh, re-re-re-re-recorded this uh, five or six times now. Okay, so first up in this section, we're going to talk about uh, foliage and line of sight. Starting off, line of sight, hi Odin. Um, I'm currently playing on medium settings, I think. Uh, line of sight is basically from the camera, you know, which is a uh, third person view in Valheim and it goes until whatever you see right that's the literal line of sight um the reason i think it's important in valheim is that a lot of foliage at eye level or down below eye level can be used to break up uh tree lines which in forests if we go over here excuse me if we go over here, if a forest looked like this, it wouldn't be particularly interesting, right? But this also applies to buildings, enemies, right? So if there's a troll right here, I don't necessarily want a player to notice. So I'll use bushes and foliage in different bunching, you know, which you can see in areas like this. And so normally what happens is that you know stuff like this will spawn in and uh break up that eye that line of sight and so this is something i'm taking into consideration because i still want people to view it but i want it to be you know if you're sprinting and hauling ass through a forest you know and you go like this and you're just looking around like this a lot of players are, normally aren't going to notice things but at the same time i also kind of want to hey odin again I also kind of want to give a reason to stop. I want, you know, reason for these mushrooms. When you break them, they drop um, red mushrooms, I think. Which, to be fair, I think is silly. 
you know, because they're brown, but, you know, whatever. Um, useful drops for pretty foliage. That makes sense. Um, and then something that... So that's line of sight. Line of sight, basically, you know, um, not only will people be able to plan a bunch of these, but they'll also... Something that I want to focus on is that it will bring a lot of life to these biomes. Um, whether at the ground floor, whether at, you know, up in the treetops with different trees. Foliage wise, um, if you guys actually come here on the server, uh, there's this Meadows Island. I've basically taken over all of it for the most part, um, except for Fiverr, who has a base over here. I don't know why he has a base over here. He's weird. This is what I have decided for the most part with Meadows. Um, cottonwood trees, I'm not particularly sold on. They have an issue, in my opinion, they have an issue. Um, 160 health for a low-level tree doesn't necessarily mesh well with what I want to do. So I'll probably have to change those. Like, this is 160 as well. Um, so I'll change these. Willows, palm trees, and bamboo will be moved. Uh, willows already spawned in the meadows, but, um, palm trees and bamboo will be moved to, um basically specific areas so for instance this is the actually i can show you better over here so if this is a beach um this is where your palm trees will spawn so your palm trees will basically spawn um somewhere along the beach line and so sometimes you might have a really really long beach line Right, so if I go um, into my, and I do, right, so you might have a beach line that looks like this, um, which is, you know, it, which is um, semi-unrealistic, but basically it'll put all of the palm trees to generate on this beach front. And then if you come over here, this walls are actually representative of... Uh, so this first layer is the ocean floor, this would be the beach layer, this is the biome layer, and then this is the, um, I guess, hill mountain layer. Uh, so this is your biome layer, you know, all the way down until the beach layer. Um, and then basically you have your uh, seafloor layer here. So much like this rock core, uh, this coastal rock, this only spawns in very specific height ranges. So these plants as well will only spawn in very specific height ranges. Um, and then, so you may have, um, it, it should modify plants so that they work a lot better, like palm trees. If they happen to meet the requirement to have a beach on the inside, uh, in the interior of, um, lands and stuff like that i'm completely fine with that it doesn't really bother me um but i don't necessarily want palm trees and stuff like that on you know just spawning in the inner aisles i don't think it fits the planes stuff like bamboo definitely doesn't fit the planes um there isn't enough water for bamboo to thrive there and stuff like that so something that i'm taking into consideration and then you know we have uh we have dark forest over there and we have um, swamp over here. I try to spread them out pretty far just so that if people come by to check, you know, this is dark forest. They basically all have, um, more vibrant colors along the floor, but then along the treetops, you'll have, um, basically just various shades of green and brown with the occasional red thrown in. Um, before I get kicked from the server. So this is uh, a red pine. Um, and so this will basically, you know, when you're walking through, it keeps the feel of the biome, the darkness, the denseness, but it also makes the floor very, very lively. And then we have, um, you know, swamps, but this is the, um, the swamp textures. Another criticism I have with um, RTD in particular is like the charred tree texture. It's too uh, realistic compared to, you know, the ancient tree texture, which is done very, very well. Um, this is, you know, twisted and gnarled trunk, and then it uses um, the textures from the game. I think they could do the same thing if they take this texture and they pixelate it. Um, they're hellers probably free to use pixelated textures out there. 
yeah, so I'll be adding various mushrooms, greens and blues, um, to a, to the dark forest. These will be much smaller than they are now. Um, and then over, uh, all right, this is the swamp. And so, um, another, another thing that I'm, I'm considering is, um, boreal trees. I, I think I want to work with Therese to change how these are textured. So if I can get the textures for some of these, I'll have, um, a friend of mine or so, uh, work on that. And then let me see another point that I wanted to bring up is a uh, consideration for how the world feels. Um, so baseline, a discussion that needs to be have is what should the max HP be for the MMO levels? What should the max, max HP be, max uh, stamina be, and the max aider be? Um, so max HP and max stamina, I think I'm going to go for 100 each. And then for max um, aider, I'm going to go for 50 each. So no enchantments, nothing else, literally just the MMO levels. Uh, this is something I've considered. So right now I'm at um, 200 Vigor. So I think what I'll do is, you know, basically... Because this is leveling multiple things, right? Vigor is leveling um, HP amount, health regen, and reduced elemental damage. So I'll keep the skill gap, right? You'll have to put 200 points in to get max. But on top of that, you know, you also have enchantments that'll give you extra health. You have, um, you know, high level enchantments that... Uh, let me see... So I have health plus 50 over here on this Shiva's glistening dress. So I'm thinking the defaults should be 100, 150 if you level 200 points into them. You know, I want players to be able to play how they want, but also at the same time, I want them to have an, a, a, a reasonable expectation that they won't be able to max everything. Um, and then on top of that, the way the world feels uh, travel wise is also very important. Something that I'm considering is, you know, how long it takes to travel it, for the final map again, how long it takes to travel from city to city, how long it takes to travel from uh, city to city by road, right? Do you have all of these extra achievements, you know, uh, that give you all these speed boosts? Do you have Fenris armor that gives you a speed boost? Do you have speed boost and chance, you know? Um, are you an explorer? Does that give you a speed boost? You know, are you running literally blazing fast across the world? Or for the average player, you know, if you have, um, if you're just relying on the speed boost from stone paths, which you can see up in the top right there, uh, 25%, you know, how does that feel to the player? And I think I found a good balance, at least path wise. But then, you know, the minute you put on, um, armor and stuff like that as the minute you put on armor and stuff like that how does it feel then um i don't actually have a speed boost on my armor but it's something i'm considering and then boat speed you know if you're a sailor i would appreciate feedback on that if you're playing this solo i would appreciate you know how do the boats feel after every up let's jump back to um a test server and then we'll talk about professions progression and um player guilds and dungeons and then we'll wrap the video up we're going to talk about um professions and progression so something i know that a lot of players are struggling with on the server is kind of just interaction um a lot of players are grouped up or bunched up and interaction happens between those people naturally because they've you know made new friends etc cetera, etc cetera. but something that i want players to focus on more is interacting across the server it's something that I think a lot of people um, struggle with and a lot of people need to um, work on because otherwise the MMO part fails, right? Massively multiplayer online. To be fair, this is MMO-like, not MMO itself. Um, but this will help player economy a lot. Um, something that we'll test in the next map is actually locking the professions. Um, so that if you, instead of, instead of as a skill, uh, stuff like maybe not building, but cooking, foraging, lumberjacking, mining, ranching, sailing, exploration, blacksmithing, you know, and other professions like that, those will be locked. So if you don't pick that profession, you literally will not be able to do that thing that players normally would do. And so the idea is to push players away from, you know, 
hey, this is Minecraft with Vikings to, hey, this is an MMO type server. I don't have to do everything, right? If I have a miner and I have a lumberjacker, you know, just let them do their thing. You know, if they sell stuff to the marketplace and um, also help contribute to, you know, my group base, etc. Uh, stuff like that goes a long way. You know, cooking uh, can interact with foragers and farmers and ranchers. Uh, ranchers provide meat and other various materials. Foragers can provide a whole butt ton of stuff um overall and they also get uh i don't know if i'll settle on two but maybe two to three times um materials from all types of pickables so you go and you pick up coins you pick up amber or amber pearls necklaces etc in dungeons you'll be able to get double or you know triple i'll, I'll figure out something for those um i'll figure out how i want to balance that in a later detail um you know cooking also gives you you know double uh food stats so instead of giving you plus 25 it gives you plus 50 when you're at level 100 instead of you know and then if you get a perfect uh cook as it's called you can make a um what's called a happy buff food and that gives you an extra speed boost so you know cooks could make for their own people uh all the food types that they want um and then sell all of the happy food um that they make and so you know for a lot of extra money um exploration exploration is a skill a lot of people kind of just threw off to the side mostly because of the map we're currently playing on the server this map has a lot of water uh but it does not have you know anything particularly insane to it it's just big open area connected by you know multiple ways you can go mist lands everywhere plains and forests and meadows um but obviously on the server a lot of people are relying on sailors on the final map explorers will basically be your your runners your mailmen your you know what i mean like if you're like hey i don't have time i'm currently mining i don't know copper or something like that I don't have time to go all the way, you know, from spawn to, I don't know, down here on this mountain to deliver potions. Can I get a runner to give you, you know, give you the material or give you the potions, run them down there and I'll pay you 500 gold, you know, and then an explorer may team up with a sailor to get them there faster. Um, stuff like that. I need players to consider how they can, I guess, role play more. You know what I mean? Like, it's one of those things that I think, you know, players as a consideration, they're looking at this as like an extra skill an extra grind rather than something that, you know, their character can can sell, can be, you know, they're not falling into the role that they would normally be. And in most MMOs, this is solved by, you know, you have to have that skill in order to do the thing. And the reason I haven't done it so far is mostly just because it will limit solo players, which I don't think a lot of players will mind. Um, but it's something that I'm very cautious of because I don't want to push players in a direction they don't want to go. You know what I mean? Like, I want players to be able to play solo. So if you're going to go and you're going to build something, you know, say, you know, here's my here's my house. You know, I, I don't want to have to buy you know something from a builder you know hey come and build me a home especially if i don't like you know i don't know maybe i don't like the person um but at the same time you know it's something that i don't think a lot of people are thinking on and um i'm just building for the sake of building i don't think a lot of people are thinking on and it so what it does is it creates um useless skills right a lot of players aren't finding balance with the you know role playing or you know natural progression of how the server should be played and so that kind of defeats the purpose of the skills if players aren't interacting with the professions as a role play mechanic as well as a game mechanic um then there's no point in balancing right there's no point in having them when people can just be vikings that collaborate um in a more mmo like fashion and i don't think that's a bad thing but what i'm trying to do is give players more opportunity to really define what they want to be you know what i mean i know a lot of players uh who are on the server now who don't like going out and fighting you know what i mean they they like building they like 
just having all the resources at their fingertips. And I think that's fine um, if they have people out there who are filling the roles that they need. Uh, farming, you know, is going to need seeds, which means they'll need foragers or explorers to supplement those seeds, at least to get their feet in the ground. Um, foraging is a long-term skill that's going to provide boosts all the way across the board, no matter what you have. Anytime you go and get a pickable, um, you will have, you know, a chance of getting extra items and stuff like that. Um, and then you can sell to, you know, alchemists, you can sell to cooks, you can sell to uh, players who may need, you know, specific materials for things. Um, potions and alchemy, that complements really well with the whole group mechanic. It's actually built to use the group mechanic. There are potions that are only available to be used in groups. So when you're in groups um, and within a certain range, you can use a group healing. So instead of healing one person and making a potion, you can use a, you know, a group healing potion and heal two out of three members. And it's not a waste of a potion. Um, you can you you know make one potion instead of three for everybody. Um, there are you know unique spells and unique mechanics with uh, alchemists and stuff like that. Um, there's ranching. Ranching will be another big one. If you want better wolf pets, if you want, you know, um, golems and, and, you know, high damaging bristlebacks and, you know, whatever other kind of rideables or tameables are out there, um, those, you know, they'll be able to be farmed and managed by ranchers. And so ranchers will play a huge econo you know, economic role as well. Uh, they'll be able to, you know, farm stuff. They get more materials than if you would normally go out and kill that creature. Um, Maeve right now is drowning in wolf trophies um, and stuff like that. I think she's working on mammoths right now from the deep north. Uh, she's kind of crazy like that. But, you know, there's also mobs out there from certain mods like RTD, the dragon boars, uh, when those are tameable. They're currently not uh breedable i mean when they're current they're, when they are breedable you know they basically print money they have high value meat and then when a cook cooks it you know in a recipe that's a huge health increase it's something insane like 200 extra hp or something like that and so you have these items that you know really really stack and so long as players and people are engaging with them uh the players will find that time more enjoyable and i think that um a lot of people should you know take that into account when they're playing on the server you know as they're testing things and stuff like that um testing and feedback is also super important you know what i mean like if uh something is overpowered you know it's, it's going to get balanced it's going to get patched out but it also you know if players aren't giving me feedback on what they like what they don't like then nothing ever changes um, let me see. Let me scroll this down real quick. Sailing. Uh, sailing has, you know, the boats. I'm pretty sure you saw them in the uh, last clip. But, you know, they have the Sneka. They have the uh, Gnar and stuff like that. They have the large raft. Um, and so, you know, sailors have better boats. They can go places faster. They can do more. Um, something I was also thinking about. Uh, now that I'm I'm just thinking about it um, is for explorers I want to work with the modder who does uh, rune magic so you would basically come over find a rune like this it's lit up red I'll actually put a link in the description to a video I found the other day but um, basically what it is is there's runes that you can build and so the idea is is that explorers would have more options and a unique magic style to them um, so I'll see what I can do there. Um, and then blacksmithing. Blacksmithing is going to be super, super important, right? Um, builders, blacksmiths, and material farmers, right? At the very basic. But blacksmiths are going to be such a huge um, thing for players. I want the player economy to always be active. Um, if you need copper... If you need iron, if you need silver, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Um, a good way to manage stuff like this, you know, especially with 
um, gold coming into the game is I need ways for gold to go out of the game. And so that'll introduce um, the way shrines. The way shrines will cost a certain amount um, to use them. And then um, getting into blacksmithing profession, uh, I want weapons and armors to break. So if you're not constantly managing the durability, you know, if you go from one fight to the next, to the next, to the next, and then all of a sudden you, you know, especially if you're not buying your armor from a blacksmith, right? You just have normal default durability. Um, and all of a sudden, you know, you're, you're making something uh, like this has a durability of a thousand, right? Let's say it has a durability of a hundred. Let's say it can survive a fight with uh, six trolls, right? If you go into that fight with that six troll, it will break on you, you know, especially if it's not enchanted um, or it's not upgraded with stuff like that in mind. You could be in the middle of a fight and just all of a sudden without a weapon, you know what I mean? And so maybe you carry a backup weapon or, you know, maybe you're constantly going to the blacksmith to have stuff repaired or maybe you are a blacksmith, you know, and you're out adventuring and you're able to repair your stuff on the go. Um, stuff like that is... Um, something that I'm also considering, it'll keep the player economy alive because players will have money sinks, uh, constant money sinks. And then you have, um, taxes. I'll show an image of, uh, Maeve freaking out with the, uh, tax system and, uh, marketplace. Um, there's a lot of stuff to come, you know, this will be a, like I said earlier, this will be a video series, guild halls and custom dungeons. So first and foremost, let's go and... Uh, find Crypt 2. Let's jump over here. I've actually already preloaded this. By the way, if you're playing with big mod packs, you should always preload the world with uh, Upgrade World. So let's turn No Clip back on. Um, and then go in. And then let me see this one over here. Um, these are just different caves, by the way, in the air. Um, this one over here is a good example. So something that I'll be doing is um, adding in unique dungeons. And I want to try and create a really big dungeon. Maybe um, six or seven levels, right? And so I do have a way to do that. But... Um, I'd also like to do, you know, random ones like this. So I'm using um, Max Dungeon Rooms by Digital Root right now, uh, but I'll be able to change this with Expand World, which is something that I'll be using. Uh, but as you can see, this just maxes out the amount of dungeon rooms that can that a dungeon can have. So this is what four stories, um, and so a lot of people will find um, a lot of love for mods like these you know what i mean you'll be able to go up you'll be able to go down let's see where do you even go up here uh this room right here so you would come from the entrance to the right and then go there's probably a door right there through and then you come in here and there's a um a room oh interesting it actually doesn't go through here so where would you go here no you would go oh you go on this side okay i guess you would go from there all the way around and then no ah we go through this middle middle area and then you have a way to go um upstairs a lot of players don't even know that dungeons can have an upstairs um i was actually pretty excited when i found that out too obviously you have a ramp here so anyways, so you'll have um, larger dungeons by default. Uh, hopefully most of them will be this size, but they can also be um, smaller too. And then if I go back over here, um, something that I want players to understand is um, guild halls. So guild halls will be, I don't know how I want to buy them for now or how I want them bought for now. As you can see, I have um, this here. This is Odin's Undercroft. So if I go in, you have a huge giant room. This would be, you know, your first initial room. This would be your hallway. Um, it has a yep, room there and a room there. 
um oh that's right i have medium settings on so basically these are the same size these are actually just um the general idea is is that you'll be able to um i don't know maybe you find a pre-built location and there's enemies in there or something like that and you clear it out and then it's yours um or you know uh maybe you find like a really big structure or a castle or something and you want to claim that as your guild hall uh those will be sold as keys um and probably in in like high traffic areas you know get somebody's eyes on it um and then for custom dungeons these will be scattered around and this is uh odin's hollow so I actually pre-built a room onto this, but basically I can make a dungeon that goes, you know, down or up, depending on how I angle this room. Um, and then if we go through the floor, I'll show you what I mean. So these are actually, um, that's what my fairy wand is here. I know some of you noticed it. <coughs> um, so we have ice rooms. Um, just place one down because I don't necessarily care about it right now. So you have um, ice rooms. You know, this is, uh, <laughs> they're all the same, but they have, uh, different texture swaps and stuff like that, which is pretty neat. Um, it's a very good way of doing it. Um, you have, you know, different room types. You have a cross room type. You have a, um, a turn. <laughs> I'm dying, guys. Um, so you have this long turn. And then you can go into a room like this. Um, let's go back to wand one so then you just have a giant open room so some of these will just have a um like a single boss in it and then you know a mini boss and when you kill that mini boss um you can claim it as you know your guild base and so for instance let's say this is you know two three rooms deep um you have like a big hall here or something like that and then of course i can also mix in um some other pieces so uh, you know, you have stuff like cages, and you have stuff like, uh, hanging cages, and let me see, building, I'm pretty sure it is, yeah, uh, where did it go, saw it, here you go, um, so, like, Odin's Undercroft comes with, you know, various walls, and, and arches, and, you know, um, spikes and stuff like that, so you have Odin's pieces here, so you can, you know, create some interesting things. And then, of course, you know, all the other stuff we have. We have, you know, different furniture and uh, more gates, you know. So you could potentially block this off with, um, you know, like more gates or something like that. And so there's a, there's a lot of uh, thought that's gone into the mods added. There's a lot of thoughts about how I want to utilize it. But in general, what I want to do is every city... Um, will have a custom dungeon and that dungeon will be themed on enemies so you know let's say this is our uh meadows dungeon you'll come in here and um you'll have to go through and hell what i may end up doing is moving um some of the bosses into dungeons uh so something like um, Ekthir, maybe I, I hide Ekthir away in a deep, dark cave. Um, and so, you know, and I can decorate the stuff outside. This is kind of, uh, what I was going, what I was talking about with, um, foliage and line of sight. You know, decorate the outside so it doesn't look all the same. Um, hide the entrance behind, you know, vines or something like that. Um, but there, there are a bunch of dungeons that, um, I'll make. And so, at the very minimum, each city will feature a Slayer dungeon, I guess is what we'll call it. And so, you know, there will be a particular enemy type that is in there. Grey Dwarfs or, um, you know, Trolls or, you know, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And so, when you go in these dungeons, they'll be scattered around the map. Um, and you'll have to pay to find them. <laughs> And then, you know, maybe an explorer friend knows where, you know, this dungeon is and stuff like that. And so I think that that's a great idea. I'll be able to customize the spawns much like I did with the Ekthir stuff. Um, add in farmable locations on a timer so people won't necessarily struggle for, 
you know, certain materials if they can't go out and find. They won't have to struggle through quests. You know, they'll be able to complete them in a timely manner. There's a lot of ideas. And, you know, as I said, again, you know, this is a video series. So as time goes on and um, I have more to show, like if I do a um, I probably won't do the dungeons for quite a while. But basically what I want to do is I want to do um, every biome. So the video series theme will be themed uh, like every biome. So you have uh, meadows, which is this video. You'll have black forest, which is the next video. You'll have, you know, uh, swamps, et cetera, et cetera. And then as polish is added, as new things are talked about, um, I'll show cities, I'll show uh, bosses, I'll show furniture. You know, we'll talk about the impact of things. We'll talk about balance changes I've made. We'll talk about ideas I have and, and all of that. Um, so for those of you interested, if you want to join King Thalion's server, um, there's still a whole bunch of slots open. Um, one, you can support King Thalion by subscribing on Twitch. Uh, that is, you know, obviously this whole project started because of him. You know, I, it, I would be remiss if I didn't shout that out. If you want to play on the server, you will find the new player guide in the description. Every player must read it. I will ban you otherwise if you come on the server haven't done the steps if you guys would like to because i know a lot of people are now asking about it if you guys would like to support me uh ko-fi link is on the screen in the bottom right hand corner um wiggling around it's been there the whole video um or if you guys would like help test the map and design map features um you can actually subscribe and join my gilded but yeah you'll get access to um test versions of the map and the only thing that i ask is obviously don't share them right you know what i mean if you're paying for the map it kind of doesn't make any sense for you to share it around you know like comment subscribe do all those things of course and you know you guys will find more content like this over the upcoming months uh i'm expecting the map to be released quite a while after ash Lads. <laughs> at minimum um if ashlands drops in july um it'll probably be until august i have to do you know uh for the most part most of the cities are done i know you guys have seen those in nine by into cars videos which whose links will be down in the description i know that um there have been teasers here and there but basically i want to go through and break down you know different features and stuff like that so you know uh subscribe for more uh thank you everybody for watching i am atlas and i am out